As we approach the island of Henizio, where the fisher folk live, we see a great concrete statue. It was erected by the Mexican government. The statue is about as high as can be climbed from the countryside. Lake Pazcuaro is about 250 miles west of Mexico City. The lake is nearly 30 miles of islands, the largest of which is this barren rocky island called Henizio. The island fishermen live in primitive adobe buildings centuries old. Most of the houses have only one room. They are roofed with homemade tile. As we slowly cruise a boat along part of the shore of this island, as they wash their hair and their clothes at the water's edge. These island people are Tarascan Indians. Like their ancestors, they live much to themselves. They mix very little with the mainland or mountain Tarascan tribes. Most of them still speak only the ancient Indian tongue, even though Spanish has been the official language of Mexico for over 400 years. On the shore, nets are drying. The dugout canoes we see along the water's edge were each cut from the solid trunk of a tree and brought down from the mountains by manpower hundreds of years ago. The Indians did not have any burrows or oxen then. The Spaniards, when they came, introduced the beast of burden to Mexico. The dugout canoe is still the islanders' only means of transportation. As we continue our cruise along the shore, we must remember that the food of these island people is largely fish. To vary their diet, the men and boys hunt for ducks and other wild fowl. They use a three-pronged bamboo spear, which is thrown with a primitive throwing stick called a tsipaki. The spear can be thrown much farther with the throwing stick than by hand alone. They spear the ducks in flight, and if a bird falls to the water wounded but can still swim, the final capture is very difficult. The bird just dies below the surface when it sees the spear coming, and then a long chase and many throws are sometimes necessary. And so we leave the island now and go out on the lake and find some of these hunters. Watch Mishawa, a 12-year-old boy, as he spears a duck in the air. The duck is wounded. It falls to the water and dives. He waits for it to come to the surface. And then he throws. And when he picks up his floating spear, he has another duck. And is Mishawa proud? As we turn from Mishawa, we see a man paddling toward us. We hail him and ask him if he will show us his throwing stick. Most primitive people all over the world stopped using the throwing stick when the bow and arrow was discovered. But here on this beautiful lake in Mexico, it is still used every day. We see it is about 24 inches long with holes for two fingers. It has a groove with a cup at the other end into which the spear shaft fits. Suddenly a wounded bird surfaces to our left and we cry, there he is. The hunter swings and throws, but the bird dives and gets away. He retrieves his floating spear and as the duck comes to the surface again, he turns and throws and this time he does not miss. Then he brings the bird slowly, carefully to the dugout. He does not want it to fall back into the water and get away. He tells us it is a pato pico azul, a bluebill duck. Good eating, he says. Very good. As we renew our cruise upon the lake, we see a group of fishermen using the famous butterfly nets of Lake Potsquarrel. They are beautiful, graceful, and used nowhere else in all the world. The boats form in a circle and the men put down their nets. Then the fishermen wave their paddles quietly in the water to drive the boat broadside. Thus the tiny two-inch fish are trapped in the nets of a slowly closing circle. Here one of the islanders turns toward us to trap any of the little fish which may have been startled by our boat. Because the tiny fish are easily frightened, the fishermen move quietly and very slowly. These people and their ancestors have been fishing just like this for hundreds and hundreds of years and probably will be doing so for many, many years to come. And now they paddle quietly away to find a new spot to put their nets into the water again. <laughs> 